we are going to be walking through how you can set up Google hosted authentication for your Flask application. And the reason why this is so important is that as a new developer, or if you're building a new application, that doesn't yet have a brand that's trusted by end user customers. It makes a lot of sense to let people who use your app authenticate with something they trust like Google, instead of trusting, you know, your own services, user authentication, methods. And so what we have here is a very basic Flask application and it's got a home page with a login button. And when quick login, um, it redirects me to a Google page. And um, from here, I'll put in, you know, my Google username and my Google password. And then um, once I finish authenticating at the end of this flow, it redirects me back to my uh, local Flask application or my Flask app if I was hosting this on AWS, for instance. Um, where I've authenticated, um, but at no point during this process did my local Flask app have to handle any of the authentication. It was all done in Google's part. So um, this is a great way to have customers trust that you have good authentication because you're using Google's authentication um, to have better security with your application. So we're gonna walk through how to implement that. And um, the other huge shout I wanna get out before I get too deep into this is uh, codespecialist.com. Um, I'll provide a link to that in the description. The repo I'm about to share with you guys uh, has been basically forked from it. I've just dockerized it and made some changes to make it a little bit more uh, clean in my opinion, but overall great content that I would strongly recommend checking out his video and his website. Um, so uh, with that all out of the way, um, we'll walk through how this all works um, and we'll start looking through the actual Python code here. So um, inside of this, just I'm gonna stop my Docker container. Um, we're going to look at main.py, and I'm going to make this the full screen. Um, but basically, at the high level, um, in order to implement authentication with Google or basically with any OAuth provider like Facebook or Microsoft or GitHub, whatever, um, you're going to need three basic routes. You're going to need a login route, you're going to need a callback route, and you're going to need a logout route. And so in our case, um, the purpose of the callback route is that when we redirect a customer from our service to Google to give Google their Google credentials, Google needs to know where do they give the user back to us once the user has authenticated with them. And so this callback uh, route in our Flask application is going to be what handles that uh, process. And the other thing here is that um, you know a lot of this logic uh, is basically constructing that initial call that goes to Google to tell Google how to uh, or what scopes they should be giving us, um, and also telling Google other things like what is our client secret file because what you need to do as a developer is you need to create a Google account if you don't already have one, and then um, inside of that Google account you're telling Google you know, who you are and what types of scope your application needs in order to let users use your service. And so, um, you know, Google has a lot of user information and they don't need to give all of it back to you. If you only need to know a user's name and email address, then you can be very specific and tell that. Uh, and that's what we're doing on line 21 here. Um, and so, uh, you know, at the end of the day, all this stuff, you can clone it. Um, you don't have to worry too much about changing most of these things. Um, but I will call out the parts that you do need to change as well as how do you set up the Google uh, parts so that you can actually run this authentication for your own service. Um, but, you know, we'll, we'll proceed. So um, basically, uh, you've got your three routes. And then um, for our purposes, uh, we also have this other route called protected area. And in this protected area, this is something where we've added this uh, decorator login is required. And so decorators in Python are basically wrappers around other functions. And so basically what's happening here is this login is required decorator is checking to see if there's a Google ID in the session of the user. And if there isn't, then it returns a 401, which is an unauthorized error. And then if not, it just returns a simple function. Um, and so that is where we are handling people who are trying to view this page who haven't yet authenticated through Google. Um, and then once they have been authenticated, they're allowed to proceed. And once they've authenticated with Google, their session is going to contain other things like their name or their email. Um, and we can access that information from within our Flask app uh, like that. So, um, you know, with all this stuff out of the way, I just want to walk through the steps that you need to do to set this up on your own. So you can then, you know, build on this uh, for your own purposes. Uh, so basically the key thing here, and I've put this all into the readme, is that we are going to start out by going to console.cloud.google.com. And I'm going to uh, move this to the side. 
and we're going to open up a new tab, paste that in. And so right here, you can see that uh, you can choose from one of many projects you have. If you have many projects, you won't see anything here, but you're basically gonna click on new project. And then once you've done this, you can give this thing a name. Um, we'll call this the you know, Google Flask Authent Demo. And um, you don't have to worry about uh, you know, location. And just, I'm gonna copy this because we're gonna be reusing this name multiple times. I'm gonna click on create. And um, once it finishes creating this, uh, the next thing we're gonna be doing, and I'll just give it a second. So I'm gonna switch over to this project. Um, is we're going to click on the uh, navigation menu and then go to the APIs and services and then click on credentials. And right in here is uh, where we've just created our new little project. We're going to first click on create or configure consent screen. So this is where if your user just clicked on login or they just visited that login route, um, they're now being redirected to Google. And this is where if you had a little company logo or something, you could you know, create that little you know, picture for them to see. We're gonna see that these are external users and we're going to click on create. And we're again gonna give this app a name. I'm just gonna use the exact same name that uh, we went with. And then in this case, um, we have to provide a support email address. Um, so I'm gonna put in my email address with Google. And then we're going to keep on scrolling down here. And um, you don't need to make any other changes. Um, I'm also going to, uh, you know, you can make up like a BS email for your uh, developer contact info um, or put in a real one if you're doing this for a production environment. And then just click on save and continue. Uh, and then next up here is we're not going to need to be making any uh, changes to these uh, scopes, but you know, if you wanted to drill down and need to know like a person's specific age or you know, some kind of you know, geolocation, um, this is where you could specify that information. Um, but the user would see that you were being that they would be giving that information to you when they are on that consent screen. We're going to click on save and continue, um, and we're just going to click on save and continue again, um, leaving all the defaults. And then finally, I'm just going to uh, click back to dashboard. So now that we've created this project. Uh, the next thing we're going to want to do is create some credentials for this. And specifically, we want the OAuth to client IDs. Um, so just click on create credentials, OAuth client ID. And uh, this is where you're going to tell Google that you are making a web application. And, you know, again, I'm just going to keep giving this the same name. And, um, this is an important part. If you don't give it a URI, a URI um, it won't work. So you're going to click on Add URI. And in my case, if you are going along with the GitHub repo that I've provided, um, the uh, redirect URI is going to be localhost and then forward slash callback. And um, then you're going to click on Create. And you can see that once it does that, it's going to create this set of uh, client credentials for you. And if you click on download JSON, um, it's going to download a JSON file here. So I'm gonna click on this guy and um, you can see that it's uh, basically made this for you. Um, and specifically what we wanna do is just copy this JSON, you know, view the, just the, the raw data. And we're going to copy this and then we're going to go back into our little Python uh, editor. I'm, I'm using uh, PyCharm right now. Um, and then you go to project to make this bigger. And inside of project, we've got uh, this part right here. So I'm going to uh, paste that guy in just like that. Um, and so one thing to note about that specific client secret file that you've made is that it is uh, very sensitive and very unique to your specific application and your Google account. So basically I'm gonna delete all this stuff once this is over so you guys can't reuse these things. You have to go through this process yourself. Um, but you have a client ID, which is public information, and then your client ID will have a client secret associated with it. Um, so basically I'm going to be copying this piece of information and um, the client secrets, which is also in that JSON file, is something that uh, you would want to save in an environment variable and make sure that it is not easily accessible because otherwise people will be able to authenticate in, on your behalf to other applications that you don't necessarily trust and so it would damage your own brand too uh, along the way. Um, but basically that client ID that we've just created, we're gonna go back into our main.py file and we're going to 
uh, update this to you know whatever uh, we just got. And then finally, um, inside of that client secret JSON file, we also have an additional uh, client secret right here. And um, this is something that, uh, again, make sure that you save this as, uh, make sure you save it as a, an environment variable if you're doing this in a production environment or if you're gonna have other people work on this with you because um, that's not something you want getting out. Um, but you're gonna go back to main and I'm just going to update the app secret key with this information. And then um, finally, now that we've made these two changes, uh, that is all that you need to make for your app. And then in my case, if you are just cloning this code and you wanna uh, you know, start building off it, um, this is where you would run the command docker compose build, just to rebuild this in case you haven't built it before. And then finally we'll run the command docker compose up. And you can see that's now running on port 80 of our local machine. So if I go to Chrome and I open up a new tab and we go to localhost, we get this login page, we click login and I'm gonna give it you know, my account. And um, you see it's, it's able to figure out what my name is based on the Google account that I've just uh, shared with this little Flask service. So that is how you can get started with this stuff. And then when you have that, you know, when you're clicking log out, it takes you back to your login screen. Um, another big thing to call out about this little uh, demo app, if you are intending on using this in any kind of production environment, is that it is bad in the sense that uh, it is saving the, or it is, it is trusting the session that is present uh, for a client call with, you know, basically all it's doing to check whether or not a user is actually authenticated is it's seeing if um, there's a Google ID present in it. So, you know, in an attack, someone could just post or have a session locally that they created that has Google underscore ID in it. And if it does, then they would be able to grant unauthorized access to your application. So um, the big thing here is that the client is being trusted with the Flask session. Um, not the server. So to make this a more secure thing for a production environment, you would want to figure out how to basically establish a unique connection between the client and the server, wherever you're hosting your Flask app, and make sure that you know the way you are making sure that um, this user authenticated is by referring to some local storage on the server itself, and not session data that is on the client's computer. So um, with all that said, this is how you guys can get up and running. Hope this is helpful stuff. Thank you all for watching. Let me know if you have any questions and be well.